So are you ready for another spectacular dish from West Africa? This is week in country number 151 on our second attempt of cooking the food of every single country in the world. And tonight, up to the nation of Senegal. Senegal, located on the westernmost part of West Africa, is bordered by Mali, Mauritania, Guinea, Guinea Bissau, and it surrounds the Gambia on three sides. It also shares maritime borders with the island nation of Cabo Verde. Now, the cuisine of Senegal is a thing of legends. Now, as you'd expect, since it is on the Atlantic coast, there's a lot of dishes involving fish. But but there's also a lot of dishes that involve chicken and lamb and peas and eggs. Uh, peanuts are a staple crop. You'll get lots of peanut dishes around the entire area. The cuisine is very much the food of the various ethnic groups that live in Senegal, particularly the Wolof people. It's also heavily influenced by the cuisines of the French, Portuguese, and North African traditions. You'll find dishes involving both rice and couscous, lots of great layered spices, and uh, we worked on all of this four years ago when we did this last time, so let's take a look and see how things went when we tried things then. Well, four years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I was only able to cook and stream across two nights. Now we're down to one on these videos. But the first night I did the national dish of Senegal, which is the dish that we're doing tonight, which is called Chebujen. It is a Senegalese fish and rice dish. It is a massive dish with a jillion different ingredients. Now last time I wound up cutting the dish in half to make it serve fewer people. This time I decided against that. But last time it went rather well. I wound up using snapper and it came out rather nicely. This time though I really want to bring it up a notch by using a special magic ingredient. So more on that in a moment. Now the second night I kind of failed. I mean it tasted okay. I made a Senegalese chicken and peanut dish which came out okay but looking at it now I see I screwed up a number of different ways and at the time someone from Senegal did point out that I screwed up a number of different ways so oops on that. So we're not going to repeat that one. But like I said what we are doing tonight is the chaboujen which is supposed to be a fantastic dish. So sit back there's going to be a ton of ingredients. I hope you have all day to prep. This is what goes into that dish. For our chebujin, or Senegalese fish and rice, we'll need, first, for the fish and stuffing, a quarter cup of finely chopped parsley, two teaspoons of crushed red chili flakes, six cloves of garlic minced, two scallions minced, a quarter of a small yellow onion minced, kosher salt and freshly ground black pepper to taste, and eight four ounce fillets of grouper or red snapper. And then for the chebujin itself, we'll need a half a cup of canola or sustainable red palm oil. We're using the palm oil here. Two medium yellow onions, roughly chopped. One medium green bell pepper, stemmed, seeded, and roughly chopped. One 12 ounce can of tomato paste. Six cups of fish or vegetable stock. We're using fish stock here. Six small carrots, halved crosswise. One large eggplant, cut into large chunks, or four small Thai eggplants. One medium turnip, peeled and cut into 12 wedges. One half of a large cassava root, peeled and cut into one and a half inch chunks. One third of a cup of dried white hibiscus flowers, optional if you can find them. Two tablespoons of tamarind paste. Two tablespoons of fish sauce. Four cups of basmati rice. And lime wedges to serve. Whew, well, if you haven't tired yourself out from all that chopping and separating, it is time to get cooking. <laughs> First, make the fish and stuffing. Into a bowl, place parsley, chili flakes, garlic, scallion, onion, and salt and pepper. Mix it together. Then, using a paring knife, cut a two inch slit lengthwise into each fish fillet. Stuff the fillets with the herb mixture and set it aside. Then make the chebujin. In an 8-quart Dutch oven over medium heat, heat the oil and add the onions and green pepper and cook, stirring until softened, about 10 minutes. Then add the tomato paste and cook, stirring occasionally until the vegetables are very soft and the paste is lightly brown, about 10 minutes. Then add the stock and bring it to a boil. Reduce the heat to medium-low and add the fillets. Cook
Cook until the fish is just cooked through, about 18 minutes. Then using a slotted spoon, remove the fillets and transfer them to a plate. Then cover it to keep it warm in an oven. Then add the carrots, eggplants, turnips, and cassava. And cook, stirring occasionally until tender, about 40 minutes. Then using a slotted spoon, transfer the vegetables to a bowl and keep that warm in the oven. Then add the hibiscus flowers if using, the tamarind paste, and the fish sauce. And cook, stirring occasionally until the hibiscus flowers soften, about five minutes. Then add the rice and stir to combine. Reduce the heat to low and cook covered until the rice is tender, about 45 minutes. Remove from heat and fluff the rice with a fork. Then to plate, remove from the oven the vegetables and the fish. And among the plates, divide servings of the vegetables, fish, and rice. White plates, dress with lime wedges, and serve. How did that all go? Well, it was out of this world. It was so great. And it did require a lot of effort. It took at least three hours in the cooking time alone, not to mention the prep time. So budget the time well. But I used grouper this time, which was just really the perfect fish because it had a fantastic flavor. It was a nice strong fish that held up in the stew and the spices were phenomenal. The red chili flakes gave it a really nice heat. The garlic and parsley really helped and the fish just was so good and you make sure you have that lime on top made it even better. The vegetables were just succulent and the rice, oh my goodness, the rice was so out of this world I can't even begin to describe it. And the reason why it went completely over the edge was that magic ingredient of the hibiscus flower. So I'm glad I found it and I, you should too because if you make this it's gonna really impress all your dinner guests, trust me. So that is Senegal and we're gonna be going back and forth to Africa a lot over the next few weeks so yay for that. But next week we head back to Europe and we have the food of Serbia. See you then. And remember, if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, please be sure to follow us on Periscope. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Like and subscribe if you'd like to be advised when these videos are posted, and be sure to hit that bell to get those notifications. Remember, links to the original recipes can be found in the About section. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about the food reading, please be sure to sound off in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy eating!